Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today it's about gouache. I'm not an expert in gouache and I'm going to leave a few links down below to other YouTube channels that know much more about gouache. So I think they are a better resource for gouache information. Now today's video is more about my thoughts on a fresh out of the tube versus palette gouache and I was asked to make this video uh, by you actually in the comments. I will put on the screen the comments asking for that and thank you very much for asking for this video. Big big disclaimer, none of these brands sponsored me, none of them. Now I've been using gouache for about 10 years now. I think most people use gouache at school and I am counting the school years because that's how I started using gouache. 10 years using gouache, that's a long time, even though it's not 10 years knowing how to use gouache. That's very different. I've learned gouache techniques, kind of, in the last four years or something. And for the other five or six years, I was using kids gouache and... You don't need super expensive art supplies, but gouache, I think it's one of the mediums where you need at least a decent student, student grade paint instead of a kid's grade paint. I still use some student grade paints, like I use Royal Talon's, uh, what they call extra fine quality gouache, and this I would still consider student grade, but if you choose your pigments wisely, uh, you can get away with it and it will still be fairly light fast, I think. I haven't tested it, but most information I could find online about it says it is fairly light fast, so you just need to choose your pigments. For instance, this lemon yellow, it is PY3, so if you know anything about pigments, you know this is not super, super light fast, but it is still decent enough. You need to hunt down the colors you want from the brands you want. That's something I also wanted to, ch to touch on. You don't need much for gouache, and for instance, in watercolor, you can get away with three pigments, a primary yellow, a primary cyan blue and a primary magenta. You only need three colors for a very successful watercolor. You can expand on it for basically for effects and for ease of mixing and for speeding up your process. Watercolor is very versatile and you can use either three pigments or like a hundred pigments and you can still get away with it. You just need to know how to use it. With gouache you basically need five pigments. You need like primary yellow, primary cyan, blue, primary magenta, white. Very important, in gouache you really do need the white. It's not like watercolor, but in gouache you do need white and you do need black. If you don't want to use black, you do need some extra darker pigment to make really nice blacks because you can, you know, mix the three primary colors in equal parts and it will give you a very dark grey, but with gouache, when you apply a light color, it tends to darken and when you apply a dark color, it tends to lighten. So if you only use the three primary colors to try to achieve a dark color, it will not be super dark or at least not as dark as you may want it to be. So that's where using other pigments comes in and usually beginner sets come with five colors so primary is white and black. Something I would recommend is you should find not only a brand you enjoy using but also a brand that is affordable in your in the country you live in or in your city or wherever you can buy it because I don't think, or at least I'm not enough into gouache to know the difference between pigments. And what I mean by this is in watercolor you have like granulation, you have opacity, and you have and then you, and then you have the actual color. In gouache, everything is supposed to be opaque, even though there are a few pigments that you can only make opaque if you mix with white, but you still need to be kind of careful about that. But for instance, granulation is not a big deal with gouache. Everything is more or, or, more or less smooth. 
kind of. The brand I've been using the most, I mean, I've been using the most two brands. One of them because it is fairly cheap for what you get. That is Royal Talons. You can see I've gone through like the basic set and then I decided for some reason that I was going to buy the green. I regret that because I barely use this green. You can see it's almost full. I bought this green like three or four years ago and it's it was enough time for me to go through a whole primary set. The yellow is missing because I cut it up. These are way cheaper, like per milliliter, than the tubes. It was enough time for me to go through a whole thing of white. There's only a very tiny little bit and it got separated. This is the brand I use the most because it is the cheapest one where I live that is still enjoyable to use and that still has most of the nice properties of good gouache. It's still very opaque, fairly light fast, works really smoothly with regular brushes and obviously you always need to adjust the consistency with water, but it has a really nice consistency of the tube, so you need to adjust it, but not too much. And yeah, it a little bit goes a long way. So all the things you want in a gouache. Okay, and then I caught Winsor Newton on sale. I've told, I've talked to you about this before in my watercolor videos, because um, a store I used to go to very often had a very big Winsor Newton sale because they stopped having Winsor Newton, so they had to get rid of all the stock. So I got like each tube of this bag of Winsor Newton water, um, gouache. Each one was like two euros and there are some pretty expensive tubes there. So I've been using it as well, but the ones I use the most are still <laughs> the cheaper ones. So the question was specifically about using gouache dry on a palette. And that's something I don't really recommend. And I want to show you why today and why I have like three different palettes made out of three different materials. We have a ceramic dish that I use for mixing in general. We have a plastic one with wells that is very popular here on YouTube. And then we have a little tin that has a sticker with my name on it. <laughs> First thing, very small, fits in your pockets. You can have very decent mixing surfaces. It doesn't have a hinge. You can still find boxes with hinges. Like in a corner I have white, then I have red and magenta, two tones of blue. It This looks green, but this was yellow with earth tones and I think it has a bit of black which is like the worst thing you can have next to yellow but I didn't know okay I didn't know better back then or I didn't think about it back then now this is convenient because it fits in your pocket you can open the box spray it with water close it when you open it the paint feels way softer and way more similar to regular out of the tube gouache it's not exactly like out of the tube gouache, but it can get you fairly close if you do this method of letting it soak a little. Now, I don't like this. I don't use it the way the paint gets rock hard. And that goes for like all gouache. And also it gets flaky. Here it's not very flaky, I don't know why. But yeah, I don't really like this method. It can be useful, many people use it, I just don't... I don't really enjoy gouache on the, on the go. The second option, it can be very convenient, it has a thumb thing and holes for brushes. And many people use palettes like this, even for watercolor. I just don't... I've used it a lot, don't get me wrong, but I don't find this comfortable. Everything got very flaky, very fast. It's not as flaky anymore because I usually dust this off before using, but still, very flaky. Something I really don't like about this, I don't remember a lot of what is in here or by what order it is in here. All I know is that I don't find this useful. I know a lot of people use these palettes with gouache and I've used this before, I've used this outside. It is a little bit it is kind of useful, yes, but I don't enjoy painting with it and I don't, I can't really explain why, I just, I don't know, 
I don't like it. I have a complicated relationship with gouache, you know? I really enjoy it, but only in certain conditions. <laughs> but what I did here, and you can see there are like three blobs that are really shiny in comparison with the rest. What happened with those blobs is that when I got um, my White Knight set, when I got it, I didn't think to first check the pigments before buying it. It was a really nice set, but there were three colors that I didn't like at all. One of them was this very strange green that I really don't like because I, I, I love green. I hate middle of the road green. I don't know why. For instance, the uh, PG36 Thalo Green yellow shade. I hate that color and I can't tell you why. I just don't like it. I know it is useful for mixes, but I don't like it. I just know it was opaque and it was ugly. And then there was a very opaque orange that I think was either golden or deep golden or something. And I thought, you know, opaque colors can go with the gouache. I don't really care. And then there was the cadmium red light. Since then, I learned to love cadmium red light. First I learned it was very toxic and then I learned to love it. I don't know. I think it is the only cadmium color I actually really love. My thoughts on this palette, this will get your bag dirty. And that's the thing I hate the most about these palettes. I'm sorry to be a downer here, but when these flake, oh boy, the flakes will go through the hinge and then there are these br uh, holes for brushes. These holes will make the flakes go out of the palette into your bag. And if you get your bag any, this, like the slightest bit damp, it will reactivate and get everything dirty. And I can stand that because I like to paint on the go, not really with gouache, but anyway, I don't like it. I love the palette, but not with gouache. This would work with watercolor, but with gouache, it flakes, it gets everything dirty. And yes, I did try the honey trick. Like every single paint in here has a little bit of honey, except for, I think, this one. I'm not sure, but the ones that are broken, I think all of them had honey. I remember very clearly adding honey to like, in, if not all of them, almost all of them. And it didn't help. So the, gr the great advantage of this palette is that you can still see which color is which and if you remember what you've done or if you label, which I should have done, if you label your colors, you can know what color is what. And then, after just telling you I hate these palettes, okay, I don't really hate them that much, I just don't use them and I don't like them and I don't like to use them, so let's get them out of the way, okay? Now, the only thing I've been using, especially since I'm stuck at home, well, I'm not stuck at home anymore, but I might be soon because COVID is going nuts again, like since March or something, I've only used this one. And you've seen this in my videos before. This is a ceramic tray that is not meant for watercolors, but it was kind of broken and my mom didn't want it for food anymore. So she asked me if I wanted it. It's ceramic and that feels really nice to mix on. I use the colors that are drying here, even though they are flaky and I don't really like doing that, but it's very easy to just grab one of these. I have one of these inside each of these containers and when I run out of this, I'll just wash these little plastic things and pass them to the next jar. And yeah, you get a glass jar that you can use for something else, like carrying water or something. So yeah, I just use those and put some extra paint in here whenever I need to paint. Because I do have quite a bit of yellow in here, or a bit of purple, greens and browns and stuff. Any of this is very hard to use. What I usually do is I spray this or add water just to the ones I know I'm going to use. Then let it sit for a bit and when I come back, I add fresh paint of the color I want to use. Like, it's never just dry paint. There's always a bit of fresh paint in there as well. And that's what makes this way, use, way easier to use for me because I can't really carry around all those bottles of paint with me. I can't keep them around all the time, so this is not good for traveling or for sketching on the go. But for sketching at home, which is 
or painting at home, I'm sorry, which is how I use gouache. It's pretty much what I need. So this is the one I would recommend for painting at home. If you want to travel with your gouache or paint outside, of course you can use these the same way everyone else uses. I just don't don't really enjoy it. So overall gouache is really nice. So I'd say give it a try and yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much for watching. I hope this was interesting or at least mildly entertaining for you. And yeah, don't forget to check out the other artists I linked because they know what they are doing in terms of gouache. I hope to see you next week with another video, I guess, I hope. Let's see, let's find out if I am able to make it on time. Because it has been a bit hard for me to get them on time. But let's see. Bye!